When it comes to racing, whether it's drag racing, street racing, dirt track racing, asphalt racing, whatever it is, overheating is a key issue, especially if you're running high RPMs for long periods of time, right? limited yellows, whatever, the engine temperatures can get really hot. If you live in an area like Bakersfield, which gets up to 110 during the day, it can get real hot. So sunny this weekend was running pretty hot. That's not gonna cut it because it's only 70 degrees out here right now. And when we get out there in the summer, it's gonna get hot. So we've gotta figure it out. And I've got some solutions that are gonna bring the temperature down and we'll go over some of those. All right, man, let's talk about the radiator. Let's start here. So. With racing, everybody uses single pass, dual pass, three pass, right? That's what everybody uses. And the more passes that you have in a radiator, the more, the longer that the water stays in the radiator, right? It also stays longer in the block, but it stays longer in the radiator. Now, one of the biggest errors that people do, and we have this problem as well this weekend, is that they will run the wrong pulley setup based on what they're running with the radiator. Now, this is actually smaller than what I had on here previous. We ran this one this week and it's still not enough. You can see this is a reduction, right? This is off the crank. This is off the water pump and it spins the water pump at a slower rate. So you are moving the water slower through the water uh, the radiator. The problem is you're already restricting the water. You're already slowing it down by running it two times through the radiator, right? So when you're doing that, you're not moving the water fast enough. It's not, it's not fast enough. So you need to go to a one-to-one. -one. I've never seen any situation where a one-to-one -one pulley isn't a better idea for, for dirt track racing, especially, but for anything where you're running, uh, you know, 7,500, 7,600 and lower, one-to-one, -one, in my opinion, is the way to go. Now, if you're running something where, like a pavement thing where you're running up at like 8,500, you know, for long periods of time, maybe a reduction is a better way to go. But for dirt track racing, hobby stock, American stock, low RPM stuff, like 6,500, 6,800 stuff, crate motor stuff, one-to-one, -one, the way to go. Also too, one of the things that we're gonna do for this next race is we're gonna get rid of the restrictor because that's another thing is why would I want a restrictor in a race motor that's already restricting through the radiator? You're slowing it down. So restrictor out, on a, two, on a two pass, three pass radiator and a one-to-one -one pulley is a good way to start. Okay, so this is a big thing we're gonna talk about and that is running distilled water. Um, I didn't really get onto this until someone told me about it and I didn't even think about it. And depending where you live, the sediment in your water can be really bad. Now here was a pump that we pulled out of Sonny's car uh, yesterday. And I want you to see this right here. Do you see that buildup right there of sediment and, you know, even some of the water, um, the, the, you know, the products that cool water can build up a chalky residue with themselves. So over time though, you can see the restriction that that has, right? And I guarantee you that if your water pump looks like this, the inside of your radiator looks like this too. And it's not allowing the, the cores to cool because it's coated with the sediment. So the thing to do is, you know, if you're, if you're, I would definitely probably just get rid of this all together. I mean, if you want to break it down, you can, but water pumps aren't that expensive. So make sure that you have a clean water pump and then, you know, you want to put, you want to drain out all the water you have, fill it full of distilled water. I mean, this stuff's cheap right here. It's like a dollar a gallon, right? So fill it all up. And then I would, I would change your radiator. Out. If you have something like this, get rid of the radiator. There ain't no coming back dude, for that thing. But, uh, fill the thing up with, the distilled water, get it up to temp and then let it cool down and then drain it. Right. And then, um, fill it full back up, right? Fill it full back up. And that should help. That's going to extend the life of your radiator big time. And it's going to keep things cooler. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be a huge improvement for people just throwing tap water into the radiator. All right. Now here's something that some people may not agree with, but in my experience, it worked. I was in tech lane one time and my car was running hot and a fellow competitor came up and he said, do you want to cool that thing down? Run the fan closer to the radiator. And I said, well, I got a good shroud. And he said, trust me, just put the fan closer to the radiator. It'll cool it down like 10, 20 degrees. He wasn't joking, dude, because I moved that thing about that close to the radiator and that the temps came way down. I don't know what it does and what makes a difference than just having a good shroud alone, but it definitely pushed the air out fast and the temperatures came down. One of the things that can get overlooked on a race car, uh, especially people that are running um, stock balancers, harmonic balancers, is that 
you have to make sure that that timing mark is correct. And I've had motors before where they're off like four degrees, five degrees, and you can go out there with a motor that you think maybe 32, 34, 36 degrees advance, and you're at 40 degrees advance, right? And the way you do this, it's pretty simple, is uh, I remove all the spark plugs out, and then I got one of these right here. You can get them at any kind of, uh, you know, it's usually part of a compression gauge, right? And it's something where you're just gonna thread that in to the number one cylinder, okay? And then once all the spark plugs out, you'll bump the motor over, okay? And then you'll feel the compression stroke. You put your finger in the number one hole and you'll feel it compress. And as it comes up, so then when it's compressing, you'll see that that white mark moves closer to the needle. See the needle right there? So you know you're on the compression stroke. Once you get close, you want to have this plugged in. And I, I call this the spit test. It made my daughter gross out. I'm going to, what I do, so I can just show you this. I put a little bit of spit on the edge of this thing, right? And then I grab the fan and you should be able to slowly move the motor, right? And if it bubbles up, you know, you're, you're going in the compression stroke, right? Cause it's pushing the air through. And then you want to keep going, watch that bubble, watch, and then go just real slow. You don't want to pop the bubble. And then it'll keep compressing. It'll go back down. It'll keep compressing. It'll go back down. And then once it stops compressing and then it vacuums and it sucks down, now you know you're on the D-stroke, right? So you want to find that spot where it, if you move it either way, it either compresses up or goes down. Now you know you're at number one and that thing should be lined up right on that mark. That's how you know that your balancer is right. And that's a critical thing, man. If you get a, you know, you'd be surprised on what you can do to, you how much damage you can do to a motor by just not checking that. So that's a huge part to making sure it's right. Timing is another thing that we need to talk about because, you know, being uh, too advanced will definitely make your car run hot and being too retarded on the timing can make it not run good, right? With the fuels that we run, especially like in some states like California might have different fuel blends than like Tennessee, you know, um, or especially if you're not using race fuels. If you run race fuels, you can usually run a little bit more advanced in your timing. Um, you know, let's say a motor like this, right? Which is a basic nine to one motor. That thing probably should be around 32 to 34. And if you're running on the hot side, I would definitely pull it back to the 32 side and then see if you're losing too much horsepower. I mean, if you can't feel it, it's probably not there. You can look at the times and stuff like that. But a lot of it depends on the race fuels you're using. The worst thing you wanna do is have too much advance because not only are you you're exploding the ignition on the upstroke, right? And it's just not, it's just, it's a bad deal or it's too late because it doesn't fire off fast enough. So make sure that you experiment with the always error. If you're overheating, Try pulling it back a degree or two. That's not going to hurt you that much. You probably won't even notice it. You know, put it at, start, take it down to 32, um, you know, and don't get crazy at trying to run like 40 degrees advance. I know a lot of people want to do that stuff to try to get a little bit more horsepower out of their cars. It ain't worth it, dude. Trust me. So anyway, there you go. Checking it out might help you cool it down. Here you can see we have a screen here that has direct air to the radiator. And then we have a couple holes down here on the bottom. Um, this can definitely help. I mean, the, the trade-off is that the more you open all this stuff up, the more mud gets clogged on your radiator, right? So there's a compromise of finding just enough holes and then just enough air to get that thing cooled down. Also, you can run a dam underneath the radiator and that scoops up a lot of air into the radiator, which should help quite a bit. All right, so let's talk about jetting. Jetting is a huge thing that uh, has a big impact on how hot engines run. Of course, the more lean you have it, the hotter you're gonna run. and a lot of it has to do with the humidity in the air, the elevation of where you're at. And sometimes you can just run too lean. It's important to check your plugs out, make sure they have like a, uh, like a light tan, like a burnt, slightly burnt marshmallow look to them. And uh, yeah, that's where you wanna be. If you are running hot, think about running it, you know, fattening up the jets to uh, two numbers, see what that does. You definitely don't wanna be choked out. I mean, if you start, you know, every time you get behind the car, your eyes water and stuff, you're probably too rich on it. Um, another thing too is you want to keep an eye on the fuel pressure gauge. I added one of these to Sonny's car. Not only do we have the warning light in there, but I want to know, is this thing working right? Right? Is this thing actually functionally working? So when we have the car on, I could say, okay, it's steady at like six pounds. That's where it needs to be. Right? So 
ha installing one of these is a good idea to make sure that your fuel pump's working correctly. And I've had a bad batch. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's something with the supply chains, but I've had two, I won't tell the make of it, but I've had two very popular fuel pumps come in that only pumped out like four PSI. That, you know, this one pumps out six and those ones came in, they pumped out like three and a half, four. And that's not enough for racing. They gotta be at least six. So keep an eye on your fuel pressure because a fuel pump going bad or something that's starving the carburetor fuel will make them run hot. All right, man, there you go. There's some tips on keeping your cool at the racetrack.